Hello, thanks for joining us today for our Wednesday webinar, Credit Reports and Scores Demystified. So today we'll be kind of talking about credit reports, how they're used, uh, how you can get them, why you should check them, and we'll kind of also go into a little bit about your credit scores and how they're made up and also kind of how they're determined, things like that. And so now kind of the topic that you came here to get, just the basics of credit reports and scores. So when we talk about these two things, just kind of start with what's the difference between them? Credit reports are gonna be those items that kind of reflect your credit activity. So it's gonna be that big list of, you know, things that you've done with your credit, those accounts that you've opened, things like that. And your credit score is gonna be that number. It's gonna be a calculation of activity that is on your credit report. So there are, you know, a difference between the two. The report's gonna be that list of the things you've done and the credit score is gonna be that calculation of that activity on your credit report. So first we'll kind of start with what is a credit report. And a credit report is a detailed record of how you've managed your credit over time. And the credit reporting agencies, uh, the three major ones, Experian, TransUnion, Equifax, they get information from creditors and public records and they compile it into a report. And again, the big three there are the ones that we're kind of most familiar with. And it's also kind of interesting to note that there are um, specific ways that they use these credit reports. And there are a lot of variety of uh, credit reports. So Experian, TransUnion, Equifax are the three major ones, but there are you know, a long list of other ones that are a little bit more specialized and they'll kind of cater individually to particular industries. So they would be kind of geared more towards things like maybe pre-employment screening, uh, something that a government agency uses, and things like that. But there are a wide range of different credit reporting uh, agencies, but those three big ones are the ones that we talk about the most. So your personal information is one of the things that kind of makes up your credit report. And of course, that's gonna be things like your name, any names that you've used in the past, if you you know maybe have a maiden name, something like that. Uh, it's going to have your current and former addresses, birth date, your social security number, and any phone numbers that you've used. And that's kind of important to mention too. So I know I've used different work phone numbers at various times on you know applications for credit and things like that. So a lot of those previous you know work phone numbers that I've had sometimes show up on my credit report when I pull them up, and that's simply because I've you know, use those phone numbers as kind of a reliable way to reach me. And it's also going to list your credit accounts. So that will be current and past accounts. And it's going to also list kind of the type of account that it may be. And it's going to list the credit limit or the amounts that you've uh, got active on those accounts as well. It's going to list the account balance, your payment history, the date those accounts were opened and closed, in the names of the creditors. And it might also have some information from public records. Um, if there's any kind of lien that's been issued maybe against your property, something like that, that would be listed on there. Any civil suits or judgments, uh, bankruptcies, that information is all being pulled from public records and would be included on your credit report. And we'll also have information on any inquiries that have been done with your credit. Uh, those hard pulls are going to be times that you've applied for credit, and that's going to be something that will affect your score. So if you've been applying for a lot of different lines of credit, that could potentially affect your score if you've been doing you know, that multiple times in a short amount of time. We'll also list those soft inquiries, and that's kind of when a current creditor uh, checks your report typically. And it may also be when a potential creditor checks your report for maybe a pre-approved offer. And those things, when those companies are doing those types of you know, soft searches on your credit report, that's not gonna affect your credit score. And a lot of times, you know, these uh, creditors, they may be doing that to determine if they wanna update your credit limits. So if your credit card company's looking to see if they wanna, you know, offer you a little bit more spending on your credit card, that would be one of those times where it's a soft inquiry and it would not 
affect your credit score. They also may be kind of pulling that information too to see if there's you know, any adjustments that might need to be made to the APR that you're got there on that credit card. So again, those things will not affect your score if those companies are doing that. But when you apply for something, that is those times where it might impact your credit score. So how is your credit report used? Credit is often pulled by creditors and other businesses when you buy a home, uh, maybe when you set up utility accounts, buy a car, if you're trying to borrow money. Uh, sometimes if you're trying to get a job, it may be pulled by a creditor or business that you're you know, applying for that job with. I know sometimes people get a little frustrated with us about that one, bring that up to us. But that is a time that a company may be pulling your credit report and it may be kind of a factor of that job. So if it's something where you're involved in finances of a company, they may be pulling those credit reports just to kind of get a better understanding of you know, your records and what you've been doing with your own finances. You may have your credit pulled when you're applying for you know, renting an apartment, buying insurance, and definitely trying to get a credit card, things like that. So why should you track your credit report? The simple answer is you just want to kind of make sure that information is accurate. You want to make sure it's all complete and it's up to date. And it'll also kind of help you find those signs of possible identity theft. So if you're searching through there and you're seeing things that don't belong to you, such as other addresses, uh, accounts that don't belong to you, accounts that you haven't opened, that would be a sign of a possible identity theft situation and you would want to reach out to the South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs for a little guidance on how you might need to respond to that situation. So again, what should I check on my credit report? You want to go over all your personal information. Again, you want to make sure all that information is correct, so it has the correct name, social security number, phone numbers, uh, previous addresses, marital status, and type, type things like that. You also want to look over those account information details. You just want to look to see if the amounts on the list are kind of showing the amount correctly and that the status is correctly. So if it's something that's opened or closed, you want to make sure it's listed properly. And it'll also kind of show you if payments are made late or if it's late in corrections. So just double check all that and kind of make sure things line up. You also want to look to see if the balances and credit limits, things like that are correct. Uh, if there's again any dates listed for those accounts, make sure those line up for how they're supposed to do. And you want to make sure you look at those date opens, when the last payment was made, date of the first late payment, any of those types of things. And again, if you find errors, you want to uh, dispute those errors. So you can just usually, if you're doing it online, you have a little dispute button. You'll click that and it'll kind of guide you through that process. So you want to make sure you dispute any information that's incorrect. And again, those credit reporting agencies, they're going to kind of give you a little bit of directions on how to do that dispute process with them. And if you suspect identity theft, you'll want to file a report with the South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs Identity Theft Unit. So how do you get your credit report? You can get a free copy at annualcreditreport.com. You can also give them a Call. We've got that number listed there too. So if you've downloaded the slides, you've got that uh, phone number there for you. And you've also got annualcreditreport.com that you go to. And that's going to give you your free credit report from the three major credit reporting agencies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Uh, right now, they're doing that one free every week. I know it's annualcreditreport.com, but you can get that information every week. And you can request all three reports from each one of those three bureaus at once, or you can do it one at a time. You can spread it out throughout, you know, a month or whatever you want to do, or throughout a year even, however you want to split that out. But you can request all three at once, or you can do it over, you know, series of time. And annualcreditreport.com is the source that we recommend. And that's because it's authorized by federal law. They have certain guidelines that they have to follow. So other sites may charge you or may be set up to kind of use your personal information, uh, either you know selling it or using it for targeted ads or whatever. 
uh, annualcreditreport.com is not going to do that. That's kind of why we recommend using them. And it's kind of worth noting that when you go through annualcreditreport.com, it does not have your credit score. So if you're looking for your credit score, you might need to go directly to one of the credit reporting agencies, or you may need to go to your bank, or you know, and a lot of times those banks and credit cards, things like that, they'll kind of provide those scores for you too as well. And again, you want to kind of do this at least once a year, but again, you have that option of doing it at least once a week for free right now. But once a year is kind of the recommended time, at least once a year. Uh, obviously, if you have some kind of situation where you think there's an identity theft situation or maybe you're a victim of a security breach, you might want to go into that account anytime you get those types of notices and take a look at your credit reports in those situations as well. So now we'll kind of get a little bit into credit scores and what it is. So credit score is going to be a three-digit number designed to predict if you will pay your bills on time. So higher credit scores generally result in credit terms and better options. This is kind of a little example of kind of those credit score ranges. And it may kind of vary depending on which, you know, uh, type of credit score you're looking at there. And when we talk about different types of credit scores, generally, um, the two major ones are FICO and Vantage. FICO scores range between 300 and 850 points, and a Vantage score is going to be between 501 and 990. FICO scores are used in 90% of credit granting, and you're going to have multiple of them. Kind of the reason that there's two is just kind of FICO was the first one that was set up in the 80s, uh, started around 1989 by the Fair Isaac Corporation. And Vantage score was developed in 2006. It was developed by the three credit uh, reporting agencies, the three major ones, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. And they wanted to kind of have an alternate score to be able to use. And they wanted to be able to have a model that they could share among each other. So that was kind of how that other model kind of came into being. So why do you have multiple credit scores? Uh, you can even have more than one FICO score, and it's going to depend on what type of credit you're seeking, and your lenders may evaluate your credit risk kind of using different FICO scores. So, for example, an auto lender may use a different score, or there may other be other industry-specific scores that are kind of tailored to that company or that industry's need. And some of the things that they'll do, you'll see FICO bank card scores or FICO score eight. So they've got a couple of different ones that they use. And generally they're kind of tailored a little bit towards the type of credit that you're seeking. And it's kind of worth pointing out to people that it is normal to see different numbers. So kind of our example is here that, you know, you're applying for a credit card and your credit card company is showing you 726. You may also see a 698. If you've signed up for a separate free credit monitoring service and you're checking your score, you might see one that's you know a little bit lower or a little bit different than what you've seen with your credit card company. And then if you pull in with an auto lender, they may show you another score too that's somewhere else in there. In this case, it looks like it's in the middle between the two. But kind of the point is, it's just normal to see different ones. And again, it's because they're pulling different types of information about you. And they've got uh, subscription services that kind of tailor to that particular service that they're offering. And it's looking at different information that's tailored to their needs. So again, it's just kind of worth pointing out that it's not unusual to see those different scores. And they're generally gonna be relatively close to each other most likely. And we're often asked kind of what is my score made of? So here's the little chart with the FICO score, just kind of outlining the different elements that they look at when determining that score. And we'll kind of go into each one of these as we go along here. But you'll see the largest part of that is going to be your payment history and the different amounts that you owe. And then there's 
you know, smaller amounts of uh, influence put in on that score based on your length of credit history, the credit mix, and if you're applying for new credit. So we'll first kind of start with talking about payment history. And again, that's kind of that biggest makeup of the score, 35%. And they're looking at things like late payments, collections, charge-offs, if there's bankruptcies, judgments, liens about you. And again, it's all that stuff that makes up your payment history. And it's kind of worth noting too that it's based on time. So the older the information is, the less it contributes to your score. So they're really kind of looking at what are you doing now and weighing that a little bit heavier than what they would do for things that are older and things that you've done in the past. The amounts owed is about 30% of your credit score. And when it comes to that, we just kind of recommend to people say that it's best to have several accounts with lower balances than to have fewer accounts that are maxed out. And kind of the thing that they use in determining some of that information is gonna be your utilization. And generally that's your balance divided by the credit limit and that's gonna equal kind of the percentage of your credit utilization. And they kind of recommend having lower than 10% per account. And again, the lower the credit utilization, the better. So kind of the guiding line with that is to try to keep your balances low compared to your total credit limit and paying off the balance each month will be the best way to help you kind of get the best scores with that. Length of credit history makes up about 15% of the scores. And again, the longer you maintain open accounts with creditors, the better it's gonna impact your credit score. And if you're kind of struggling to establish a credit history, I know sometimes we get asked about that, but people we've been struggling to get that uh, history, getting those accounts open because we don't have that line of credit established in the past, uh, just kind of how do you build that line of credit. Uh, secure credit cards may be one option, especially for younger people. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things where you set it up with an authorized user who's also kind of accountable for that, payments, things like that. Uh, usually probably a family member, uh, possibly a close friend. They'll sign up with you and they're kind of that other person listed on the account who will be able to help you with that. And again, that information is gonna be reported to the credit reporting agencies and it's kind of that way to help people establish a credit history. New credit, uh, those inquiries that we talked about earlier, that's about 10% of your credit score. And again, those hard inquiries are when a lender that you've applied for your credit when they were reviewing your credit report as part of that decision making process if they're going to you know offer you that line of credit or not and those are going to appear on your credit report and they can influence your credit scores so that's kind of why we tell people don't apply for a lot of different types of credit if you're not ready to you know sign up for something maybe don't sign you know fill in those applications for it you can kind of look around on their website, see what those rates are, things like that. But once you start putting in those applications, that's when those hard inquiries are being made and that could potentially affect your credit score if there's a good bit of those, if there's a large number of them coming in. And again, those soft inquiries kind of occur when either you're checking your own credit report or when a lender's looking at it and trying to decide if they wanna give you pre-approval for an offer. So those things that you get in the mail, things like that, that would be a situation where they've looked at your information and decided they wanna send you those pre-approved offers. Uh, that would be kind of an example of that. And they're not gonna impact your credit scores. Uh, your credit mix is also 10% roughly of the credit score. So you wanna kind of keep in mind to uh, use different types of credit and when we say that you might want you know different things like long-term loans like a car a mortgage 
Uh, credit cards would be, you know, an another type of credit that would help kind of mix that up. Uh, Short-term loans, such as a personal loan, uh, just kind of a mix of that. You want different types of things that show that you pay on time and that you're not a risk, you know, to offer those lines of credit to. And we got kind of a quick little example of things that might impact your credit score. And it's kind of worth noting that, you know, these formulas and the mathematics that the credit bureaus are using, uh, they're proprietary and they don't really give us all the details on the exact methods that they're using. So some of the point ranges and things, their general estimates that we've used here in some of these uh, little examples here, but they're kind of that guide of how different types of things could impact your scores. So if you look with this example here that we have, or the three examples, we've got, you know, delinquent payments with a bank card, 30 days. You know, if you're using a Vantage score, that could be 70 to 90 point drop, whereas with the FICO, it would be about a 90 to 110 points that it could impact, somewhere in that range. And again, kind of the bigger things that uh, could happen, mortgage charge off or a foreclosure, that's going to be a dramatic drop off too on those point scales, 130 to 170 on the Vantage, and maybe about 140, 160 with the FICO score there. And bankruptcy would be, you know, big point drop could be 350 or more with the uh, Vantage scores, somewhere in that 220, 240 point drop with the FICO score. And again, the specific methods that they use to determine some of their uh, formulas are proprietary, but that's kind of the guiding post with that. And kind of the best way to protect yourself with that type of stuff would be to pay those bills off on time. Which kind of gets us into the how do I boost my credit score section. And kind of the things to start with are to pay your bills, watch the applications, and begin the credit history and types of credit and the credit limits. So, you know, pay your bills on time. You also want to have a few applications for lines of credit. If you applied for too many new accounts like credit cards, it could lower your score and it may lead to creditors thinking that you can't pay your bills or that you can't stick to a budget. So kind of think about what you're applying for and if you can afford to pay those bills or if you need that new credit card at all when you're looking at those types of things. And you may want to have kind of a long history of good credit. So just kind of Keep those accounts open and show that you have that history of paying those bills on time. And again, when we talk about the mix of credit, we're talking about uh, car loans, mortgages, credit cards, personal loans. You just want to have a variety of things that uh, show you'll pay those bills on time. And again, with credit limits, you just kind of try to keep those balances low compared to your total credit limit. And again, paying off the balance each month is a good way to get those scores up. We have some common credit myths that uh, come into our office a good bit where people tell us some things that may not quite be the way that the credit cards or the credit uh, reports and the scores work. And kind of one of those that comes into us all the time is people tell us checking my credit report will hurt my credit score. When the fact is getting your credit reports will not hurt your credit scores and they're an important tool to make sure your information is accurate and up to date and it also helps you uh, find the signs of identity theft. Our next myth is I only have one credit score. The fact is you have multiple credit scores. Your score depends on the scoring model, the type of credit you're seeking and even the day when it's calculated. So it's normal to see slightly different numbers throughout the year and from different sources. Carrying a balance on my credit cards will improve my credit score. The fact is paying off your credit cards in full every month, that's gonna be the best way to improve your credit score and to maintain a good one. And they're kind of looking to make sure that you're paying those bills. So that's kind of the best way is to pay those in full each month. It's going to help you improve it.
Our next myth, I have to pay to get my credit reports. In fact, is all three credit uh, reporting companies offer those one free credit reports each week. And again, the way that we recommend doing that is to go to annualcreditreport.com because again, they're mandated by federal law to be able to provide those reports to you for free through that site. Our next myth, getting loan estimates from multiple lenders will hurt my credit score. And the fact that shopping around and comparing offers can help you find the best rates. So for things like auto loans, mortgages, uh, those credit scoring models are uh, going to be a little bit different, but they'll kind of help you out. Uh, just need to do your research, but you want to find those uh, applications ahead of time, look at those rates, find the thing that's going to fit you best, and do your research you know, before you apply. So again, those soft inquiries, if you're doing pre-approved offers, things like that, that won't hurt you. But you know, you want to find those rates ahead of time, but then don't actually fill out the applications for them until you're ready to get that process moving. Our next myth, closing credit accounts will improve my credit score. The fact is, if you close some credit card accounts but hold the same balance, you're going to be using a higher percentage of your credit uh, limit, which could impact your scores. So just kind of keep that in mind. Again, that's because that usage is becoming higher at that time. Uh, might be also something to keep in mind, though, if you're a person who, if you have multiple cards, you're going to put very high limits on all of them. You know, that's probably not a good idea for you. But generally speaking, if you're, you know, closing accounts, but you're keeping that same balance number you know, all under one card or something like that. That's going to be that higher percentage of the total credit limit. So that would be how it would impact your score. So just kind of keep that in mind. Our next myth, there are only three credit reporting companies. Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, those are kind of the three major credit bureaus we talk about. But there are hundreds of other credit reporting companies. And they're all used kind of to compile and provides very specific information for things like employment, uh, maybe rental, tenant screening, insurance, utilities. So there's a large variety of different types of companies. And they're all kind of getting very specific information together for in uh, different industries. So just realize that there are a lot of different ones that may be used whenever somebody's looking at your credit. And generally speaking, uh, all consumer reporting companies, they're going to be required to provide you at least one free copy of that credit report every 12 months. So if somebody's told you that they've used a very specific uh, credit reporting company to check your credit, you can go back to that one and request that free credit report from them. But Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, those are the three major ones, and those credit reports are going to be the ones that's on annualcreditreport.com. And of course, we always tell people to kind of steer clear of scams. So if you're seeing any of the claims like this, they're kind of a red flag, general sign of a scam. Uh, generally speaking, the truth is, you can dispute all the errors that are in your credit report and you're not going to need to pay somebody else to do that for you. And here's kind of a quick list of some of our red flags for credit repair scams. If somebody's pressuring you to pay upfront fees, don't do it. Don't pay up front. If somebody is promising to remove all negative information from your credit report, uh, stay away from that. Uh, just know no one can really uh, remove information if it's accurate and current about you. There's no way to remove that from your credit report. If it's true and accurate, it's there on your credit report. It's a reflection of your credit. And steer clear of people who tell you not to contact reporting companies or creditors. 
And if you just signed up for a credit repair service, you have the right to cancel that contract within three business days at no charge. And we have some tips for free ways that you can keep your information safe from fraudsters. And of course, our first way is to consider a security freeze and a fraud alert. This can help you kind of prevent scammers from opening new accounts in your name. So the security freeze is something that we recommend to everybody as a great tool to be able to keep other people from opening new accounts. And that's gonna put your credit report on lockdown. It's gonna limit access to it without your okay. And it will last until you either lift it, uh, you can freeze it for a certain amount of time, or I mean lift it, thaw it <laughs> for a certain amount of time. But you can go on to the uh, three credit reporting bureaus websites. You can hit the button there. They have a pretty easy process to freeze it. You can kind of go to that same process to thaw it. And you can even set the amount of time that you want it thawed for. So if you're looking to apply for credit, you can hit the thaw button, apply for credit, and then when you're ready to have it frozen again and locked down so nobody can open up new lines of credit, you can put that freeze back in place. It's a pretty quick, easy process to do. And if you're wanting to put that freeze in place, you will need to notify all three of the credit reporting agencies. So you can go to their websites or give them a call individually, but you have to notify all three of them whenever you want that freeze put in place or whenever you want it lifted. And if you need to put a fraud alert in place, if you think you've got some signs of identity theft in there and want to put a fraud alert so companies have to take extra steps to kind of check who you are and validate that you are who you say you are, uh, if you want to put that fraud alert in place, you only need to contact one of the major credit reporting agencies, and they'll put that uh, fraud alert in place with the other two. So fraud alert, you only can connect with one of them and put that in place with one. And with the freeze, you will need to go to each of the three major credit bureaus to put that in place. And you also want to monitor your statements. So you want to make sure your bills, your benefits, uh, medical, financial statements, all those things, they're arriving on time and that they're all correct. And you just kind of want to, again, look for the signs of identity theft whenever you're getting those things. Make sure all that information is accurate and what they should be. If any spendings on there that you're kind of monitoring those accounts. And of course, we always encourage everyone to defend against scams. And it's kind of important to notice that scam artists a lot of times will use information from breaches to make their requests seem legitimate. So they're kind of using those details and those uh, security breaches, those little small bits of information they may get. Sometimes they may use that to try to get additional information. They send you calls, texts, pop-up windows, things like that, emails ask you to either verify personal information or financial information so they'll do things like that they may be sending you notices that say identity theft alert or your credit score has dropped something like that it's kind of the best advice is just kind of avoid clicking on those links or downloading attachments whenever you get them in those emails or text messages and you can always go to those uh, credit reporting sites directly to verify any of that type of information And you may be interested in a monitoring service. I uh, just kind of realized that a lot of monitoring services often offer you help that you can probably do yourself for free. So you'll want to research that company, make sure they're trustworthy, reliable, legitimate, and that they're going to fit your needs. So if you enroll in a service, uh, just kind of realize it doesn't necessarily take you out of the picture too. So you're still going to need to do things on your own to monitor your identity or uh, kind of look for those signs of identity theft too. So, you know, keep in mind that you are still responsible for that information and keeping your information safe and monitoring that. And we recommend kind of using these tools as well, like account alerts, like with your credit and banking accounts, 
any of those alerts that they may offer in their, uh, usually it's in their settings where you can go in and set up, you know, maybe it's the text messages that will tell you if somebody's made online purchases. Uh, I know my bank will send messages for certain dollar amounts spent. So if somebody spent like 50 bucks or something, they'll send you a text alert or an email, however you've got it set up. They'll kind of let you know that those purchases have been made. You can also get different alerts if somebody's trying to log into your account, something like that. So those are uh, good tools to take advantage of and they're free and they'll kind of help you make sure that people aren't taking advantage of your financial situations there with those. Uh, you also want to set up two-factor authentication, especially with any financial accounts that you have. And that's going to make it twice as hard for people to potentially get into your account if your passwords or something like that have been breached and some scammers have found out how to get into your accounts. If you've got two-factor authentication set up, it's going to make them twice as hard to get into because they need that additional set of information to get in. It's probably a text message that goes to your phone. So if you've got your phone, it's going to you and not to the scammer. Another great tool to take advantage of is uh, opting out of pre-screened offers. And those are things that you might get from a credit card provider or insurance company, something that tells you you've been pre-screened or you pre-qualify for them. They're sending that stuff in the mail. You can opt out of those. Uh, we've got that website address right there. You can also call the phone number. And that will help you kind of stop getting a lot of that stuff in the mail. And you're basically asking those credit providers to not provide information about you to you know potential companies that are looking for you. So a lot of times those insurance companies, credit card providers, they're basically submitting information to the credit reporting bureaus with a list of people and they want them to kind of run information about them to see if they meet specific requirements that they have for opening accounts or giving you know uh, deals to certain people or not. So basically you're telling the credit reporting agencies to not give that information to those potential companies that come to them asking for details about customers. So again, you can just kind of go to that website or call that phone number and you're going to be able to opt out of getting those offers in the mail. Uh, the first one that I see somebody asked about soft inquiries and if they show up on your credit report, uh, generally they will show you uh, something like you'll see that a soft inquiry has been done. Uh, what will be the case is it just doesn't impact your score. So you'll see that, you know, a lot of times I'll see my credit card company has done an inquiry on me. They're probably just kind of seeing what's going on with my other accounts. And if they want to, you know, maybe offer me a higher limit on my credit card bill. So you will see that those soft inquiries have been done. It's just not impacting your credit score. That's kind of the big thing with those. Uh, somebody mentioned the news of the recent social security breaches. Uh, you know, they say I froze my credit with all three major agencies after that. Uh, that is absolutely what our agency recommended doing. And again, kind of the big thing with that is if you're freezing those credit reports with those three major credit reporting agencies, if that information is out there, like your social security number, your addresses and all that stuff, if you've got those credit reports frozen, nobody else is going to be able to open lines of credit in your name. So I know I had my credit report frozen a while back and I had somebody try to open a credit card in my name. Since my credit report was frozen, they were not able to do that. And I got a message, I believe it was from Experian, if I remember right. And they, you know, said this line of credit was not able to be open because your credit report's frozen. So that's a great tool to be able to prevent those things that you're not trying to open. Uh, somebody asked, when will I need to unfreeze my credit? Uh, kind of the time frame that I would, would say with that is if you're looking to make some of those purchases that they might be running your credit report, uh, those would be when you need to unfreeze it. They asked about a purchase of a new cell phone. You might wanna ask that provider if they're gonna run your credit report before you, you know, get that approval sometimes i know you've got to do you know multiple year contracts or something like that with the cell phone so if they're running a credit report uh checking your credit to see 
you know, about that deal or whatever, uh, you probably would need to freeze it or unfreeze it for that, you know, line of credit to be checked. Just kind of check with them beforehand, but generally you can unfreeze it or thaw it before you go to fill out those applications. I know I had a car that I needed to purchase a little while back, so I put that lift in place. By the time I got to the car dealership, you know, it was thawed. I was able to apply for that credit. And then by the time I left the dealership, put that freeze back in place to kind of protect that line of credit as well, or my credit report. So, you know, kind of the example with that would be, you probably need to unfreeze it to do that if you're doing one of those longer term uh, lines where they're checking your credit reports. And then you can kind of, even when you thaw it, you can set that limit on their website. So you can set a specific time frame where you want it thawed between certain hours. So that's a good tool to use as well. I appreciate everybody being on the webinar today. And I hope you can join us for another Wednesday webinar. Again, we do them every week, usually at 10.30 a.m. on every Wednesday. So thank you again for being with us and we hope to see you again. Thanks.